Hey, you guys, it's Dr. G, and I've had comments from friends and family already on my very short video that was talking about the problems of mouthwash, right? Whoever thought that maybe mouthwash could be not great for you? And they wanted to know a little bit more of the details on why that is an issue. Well, in medicine, we have understood for maybe the past like 25 years that nitric oxide is important in the body. Nitric oxide is a signaling molecule. It's a unique molecule that's made in the bodies of humans, basically all mammals, but it's a gas which makes it unique, all right? So once it's produced, it's gone in less than a second. Um, so when nitric oxide is produced in the body, it activates second messengers and it can start what we call a signaling cascade. This is how cells in the body communicate. And the most important function of nitric oxide is blood vessel dilation. That means opening up. So when nitric oxide is produced in the lining of blood vessels, that causes the smooth muscle that are around the blood vessels to relax and dilate. Basically, um, this can help normalize blood pressure. It can regulate blood flow in every organ, tissue, and cell. And it even is a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Uh, so it's very important as a signal. And if you don't have enough, it could be related to neurodegeneration. It is also how our immune system fights off invading pathogens from bacteria to viruses, parasites. It's what's so cool is that this is a very simple molecule. And honestly, the most important molecules are extremely simple, but the number of roles it plays in human physiology is extensive. So right now, you know, there's around 200 thousand papers published in the scientific literature on this and it is it's reached a j point because people are recognizing the importance of this and and now now we're starting to see papers say helping us understand how we get more nitric oxide how can we generate this and it's incredibly important information um, so there is still a gap between the research and clinical medicine. And that is to say that there may not be a lot of you know, family doctors who have heard about this yet or the problems with mouthwash, which is what stimulated me to make this follow-up video uh, because it's it, the, the understanding of how it works in the body is very new. Basically, we don't even have a blood test where we can measure nitric oxide. Um, so it's not like you can take uh, blood and check your vitamin D level. Uh, that's stable in blood, but this change is so quick that it's not possible to measure it that way. So we've had to find different ways to measure it. And now there is um, a new way to measure a sort of a proxy for total body nitric oxide using saliva because saliva is very important to the generation of nitric oxide. Um, and, you know, one, there is a, a, there are some things we know happen when you don't have enough nitric oxide. One is an unsafe elevation in blood pressure. People have higher blood pressures. Um, and one of the first signs of nitric oxide deficiency actually is erectile dysfunction. That can be both men and women. Um, so we need it for so many different things. We also understand um, that without enough nitric oxide, you're going to have earlier memory problems and brain problems. So basically what happens when you don't make enough, we call that endothelial dysfunction. And that's the lining of the blood vessels are not working right. Okay. Um, so it's, it is a, a big thing to understand all of the processing and how do we get to nitric oxide. But the important thing that you should know is that the bacteria in your mouth are very important in this whole process of creating nitric oxide. When we take in food that has nitrates in it, and I'm thinking dark green leafies are the primary source of nitrate, the mouth bacteria convert that into nitrite. Um, you swallow it and it goes into the system and your body's able to convert it into nitric oxide. And so what, what's really interesting is people notice that 
folks who were getting a antibacterial mouthwash in the hospital in ICUs, somehow they were having an increased mortality. And it wasn't clear why, you know, for a long time, we've sort of been chasing at what's the link between oral hygiene and heart attacks, because we knew something was there. Uh, you know, for a while they thought, oh, we're going to find a bunch of bacteria in the, the clots that create heart attacks. That didn't really play out. And, but now it seems that this may be the link. Uh, we can see a, as you kill off the mouth bacteria that should be taking part in this nitric oxide production, we see a increment incremental rise in blood pressure. And so once we start to think about the big repercussions of not getting enough nitric oxide in that, that in that all your body needs blood flow and you have less when you don't have enough nitric oxide, it becomes much more important to look at, you know, why are we using an antiseptic mouthwash? And, you know, are there some times when you might want to use an antiseptic mouthwash? I guess that that's something I'm going to defer to the dentist. I know dentists are talking about this and there may be times when a very short lived uh, antiseptic mouthwash is indicated, okay? But it should never be a long process. Um, you shouldn't, I mean, so it shouldn't be something you're doing all the time because that, you know, they have shown that even with over the counter mouthwashes, right? We're talking those things that are advertised a, a whole bunch. Um, so you, to give you that fresh breath, just an over the counter mouthwash can cause incremental elevation in blood pressure. So if you have hard to control blood pressure, well, I mean, this is a no brainer. You should discontinue using that um, pre-date mouthwash, right? It's not actually helping you. Um, it will kill those nitric oxide producing bacteria and it far outweighs any benefits of, ki of killing the gingival caries that will cause plaque. All right, so it's really important that you don't want to be using that. Um, and, you know, good oral hygiene is very important. I love, love my water pick, right? We want to make sure we're, we're doing good oral hygiene, but that does not include using a mouthwash, okay? So um, I encourage you to go and look at pubmed.gov. And I believe some of the papers below, so you can look at it and, and go check this out. Um, the other thing I think it's important to understand is there's another intervention that's commonly used that can hit this nitric oxide pathway, and that's proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors are commonly prescribed for gastroesophageal reflux, and they are not approved for long-term use. This is just yet another reason why we really don't want to be using proton pump inhibitors for a long time because it interferes in this nitric oxide producing pathway. And I expect there will be a lot more research coming out about this, uh, but we know that people who... Um, have been on PPIs for three to five years. This is coming out of the work from John Cook, um, who is at Houston Methodist. They have a 30 to 40% higher risk of heart attack and stroke. Um, and that's because proton pump inhibitors inhibit um, basically an enzyme called DDH, which is part of the pathway that will lead to not having as much nitric oxide. Okay, so yet another reason for uh, you know proton pump inhibitors when they're when they reduce the acidity of the stomach, they also block your absorption of critical nutrients, right? So just yet another reason if we can do things to help the body that don't involve, involve pharmaceuticals, right? Like good nutrition, eating eating those precursors uh, to nitric oxide, such as dark green leafy vegetables, keeping our mouth happy and looking for natural ways to improve reflux. It makes you live longer, guys. It just will make you live longer. Uh, so I think that um, understand, you know, some people hear, hear uh, oh, nitrites, and they're like, nitrites, nitrites. I've heard something bad about them, like bacon and hot dogs and cured meats. But this is... This is a mis misconception, okay? So 
the nitrite, the nitrate that we get from green leafy vegetables, that's good. Um, so uh, that is going to help you. And, you know, does, does it mean that, that that's all you, I, I think a balanced diet is the way to go personally. Of course, there's different, but diets will work for different people. Um, but it could be that those diets that have dark green leafies, this may be why they show improvement in cardiovascular outcomes, because people who are eating dark green leafies have better blood pressure. Um, so I just, so everybody knows, I'm, I see some people at, I even sometimes suggest a carnivore. I suggest autoimmune paleo, suggest a DASH diet. It depends on the person. But um, generally speaking, I want people to get dark green leafies. All right. This might also be important for those of you who have MTHFR polymorphisms. All right. Because that can interfere with your ability to be creating nitric oxide. So I know a lot of you have done your 23andMe and you've heard about MTHFR, maybe you know, 20 to 30 percent of people have that variation. Um, and we we think of it as something that it, it assists with with repair of DNA and many processes in the body. Uh, and so we come back to the idea that food is medicine. Food is powerful medicine. And it's important that we are taking care of our microbiome in our mouth, our microbiome in our tummy. Um, and then doing things like minimizing antibiotics. Certainly, we're not, no, you guys, I know you're not going to use mouthwash anymore, right? I know you aren't. Um, and minimize antibiotics, uh, use them as judiciously as possible. I will do, uh, there's sometimes when you really need an antibiotic, but it is not that often. So we just don't want to leap to treating minor things like colds uh, with antibiotics. It is not good for you. It'll kill those guys that you want to, you want to be taking care of, right? All right. Well, I hope this is helpful in, in, in uh, guiding you to understanding a little bit more why I did that quick video saying no more mouthwash and um, so that we can open the discussion there. And I would love to hear your comments. Uh, please let me know if I can answer any questions. And I hope you guys all have an awesome day.